There's no one the All right, hello everyone and thank you for joining us. We will start in a few minutes to allow for more people to join our webinar. If you are just joining us, please let us know in the chat box where you're joining us from. In the meantime, we're going to be enjoying some music, some authentic Spanish music. Oh, we have Dana Wynn from New York City. Wow, so fun. Hi, Dana Wynn. Patricia from Ohio. It's great. Oh, Biagio is joining us from Fort Lauderdale. Biagio, hi, one of our tour directors. Rebecca joining us from Chicago. Welcome. And then there's Mary from Venice. Hi, Mary. We have Joy from West Virginia. <coughs> Wonderful. Tomasine from Chico, California. Cheryl from Canada. Hello to our Canadian friends. Thank you for joining us. We have Pearl from Montana. Hello, Pearl. We have, ooh, Mark from Long Island. Hello, Mark. Mary from Arizona. And Jan is from Dallas, Texas. Welcome. We also have Sherry from Davis, California and Sharon from Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, Sharon. Lynn from Ohio. We have more people from Ohio. Monica from Ontario. Wow, thank you for coming, Monica. Oh, Margaret and John from Ohio as well. It looks like we have a couple of folks from Ohio joining us today. That's great. We have Ann Jackson from California. Hello. Chris and Janet from Thousand Oaks, California. Welcome. Oh, Florence from Worcester, Massachusetts. Welcome. I am in Boston, so we are pretty close to each other. Mara Walsh, welcome from Dartley, Pennsylvania. Cheryl from Texas, hello. Joe from Middleton, Wisconsin, welcome. More people from Texas, Laurel, welcome. Then we have Ivo from Canada, welcome. We love our Canadian friends, thanks for joining us. Claudia, just like my name, from El Paso, Texas. Linda and Paul from Plymouth, MA, we're pretty close as well, sort of. We have Shauna, hola de Texas, hola Shauna. Ooh, Pat from Las Vegas, love Las Vegas. Charmaine from Moody, Alameda, California, welcome. A lot of California folks as well. Liz from Maryland, ooh, we have someone from Hawaii, Catherine, welcome. More Canadian folks, Sharon from Vancouver, Canada, welcome. Melissa is in London, but not in the UK. London, Ontario, Canada, but should have been in Spain last summer with Bernardo. Oh no. <laughs> well, we're glad you joined us and we're happy to say that Bernardo will be joining us very soon. All right, let's see here. We are ready to roll. Okay, looks like we have a great number of people. So let's go ahead and start. Hola, bienvenidos. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Claudia. I'm on the team that brings you these wonderful Travel Talk webinars and I am coming to you live from Boston. I want to start off by saying Happy New Year. We finally made it to 2021. The new year brings new travel goals and I am so excited to shine a spotlight today on the beautiful country of Spain. We are joined today by three expert tour directors live from different parts of the country, Leonor, Paz and Bernardo. 
They're here to share their stories and expertise with us all, and they'll introduce themselves in just a moment. The plan today is to walk through some webinar tips so you can maximize your time with us. Then we'll go over what makes traveling to this country and with Go Ahead so wonderful. And after, our beloved tour directors will take it away and share their insights as well as answer some of your questions. We received a lot of pre-submitted questions and we'll try to answer as many as we can during our Q&A section at the end. But if we don't get to them, please know that you can call or email us at any time. If this is your first webinar, welcome. We are so excited to have you here. Unlike a normal video call, your cameras and microphones will be turned off. You will only see and hear me, your host, and our tour directors. We can't see nor hear you, but we want to hear from you. Throughout this travel talk, please feel welcome to use the chat box to interact with one another and the Q&A box to post questions to our speakers. I know many of you might have questions about your specific trips, and I encourage you to give us a call so we can answer those questions for this time will be used for general questions about travel to Spain. All right, let's jump right in, everybody. Let's buckle our seatbelts. We are going to Spain. Spain is a country full of contrast. Once you get there, you'll understand why everyone speaks marvels about it and why it's the second most visited country in the world. If you're thinking about where to go next and you're on the fence about Spain, we are sure to change your mind today. Fall in love with a great country that has everything you could wish for. From tapas hopping in Madrid to wine tastings in the wine region of Rioja, <clears throat> Spain is guaranteed to impress you any day of the week. Its endless cultural festivals, world-class beaches, and renowned architectural sites make Spain impressive 365 days a year. One could spend years exploring Spain. From Madrid to Barcelona to Sevilla to Bilbao, it's such a magical and vibrant country. Most of the people that visit Spain come for, for cultural activities because Spain has so much to offer. Spain is home to 45 World Heritage Sites, all waiting for you to visit them, with places like the Alhambra in Granada, the Royal Alcázar in Sevilla, and all the spectacular buildings made by Gaudí in Barcelona. You'll never stop being amazed. Planning a trip can be overwhelming. There are so many things that need to be taken into consideration. Where to go, how to get there, where to stay, where to eat, what to do. It can get stressful pretty quickly. But with Go Ahead, it doesn't have to. One thing that sets us apart is our unique itinerary offerings. We have a great variation of tours from classic tours to special event tours to food and wine tours. We are sure you'll find a trip that will fit your unique travel style. For our hotels, our special IT teams handpicked every single one to make sure they are safe, of top quality, and are located in a convenient area to the destination. And our meals are as authentic as they get. So rest assured, you'll be munching on some delicious Spanish dishes that will surely take your breath away. Apart from your tour director, who is with you every step of the way, we also have expert local guides on the ground waiting to meet you and discover the destination with you. When you arrive on your included flight, we'll be there to pick you up and we'll also be there to whisk you around the country or countries you're visiting. As for the experience, we have staff all over the world who curate itineraries and experiences so you can experience the destination just like locals do. And lastly, our tour directors, they truly are the heart of the tour. They manage the logistics like picking you up from the airport, showing you the major sites and getting you acclimated. But they do so much more than that. They're a friendly face, a teacher, a friend. They're fun, charismatic, entertaining, and full of information. And if there's a small snack or major emergency, they work hard to problem solve. So you don't have to. In fact, you probably never even know a situation arose. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce your speakers for today, Bernardo, Paz, and Leonor. Bernardo, would you like to introduce yourself first? Yes, of course. Thank you. Well, hola to everybody. Um, and thank you very much for uh, 
being here today. Especially a big hello to all the friends that are watching, um, that we have made friends along the way. My name is Bernardo. I'm actually from Valencia, but I've been living in Madrid for the last 17 years. And I've been working with EF uh, Go Ahead uh, for almost 10 years. I have a big passion for traveling and especially to show uh, people about my country and everything so that we have in here. Wonderful. Thank you, Bernardo. Leonor, do you want to go next? Leonor, remember you might be on mute. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Claudia, thank you very much. Uh, yes, I'm Leonor. I've been with the F since 1994 and with Go Ahead since 2001. Uh, I have grown up uh, traveling. Uh, all my life is about travel and visiting places and moving to different countries. So um, I love to share this passion with my group members and I love to share the passion for my country. Gracias, Leonor. And lastly, but certainly not least, we have Paz. Hello, everyone. I'm Paz. I'm originally from Madrid. Um, I've been a director for EF since 1998. I started uh, working on my last year at university and because of my love for languages and travel, I could never stop. So here, here I am. And it is my pleasure to be with you today. Thank you, Paz. All right, let's get right into it. The Grand Tour of Spain is one of our top selling tours in the region and for good reason. It is a tour that covers some of the biggest highlights of Spain and it is a great mix of art, culture, food, architecture and history. Bernardo, do you want to walk us through this tour? Yes, of course. I love to. Uh, this is actually uh, one of my favorite tours, uh, also because it was my very first tour with uh, Go Ahead, so I have a special love uh, for it. But um, I really like it because I think it's uh, it's a very complete uh, tour. Uh, and if you love uh, history, architecture, culture, art, uh, food, of course, um, this is a perfect tour for you because uh, it's been designed uh, to cover all the expectations that people might have when they think about Spain. And, um, you know, we start in Madrid, we go down south and we end up in Barcelona and um, we cover all the major cities and all the most important highlights uh, of the of the country, uh, people are going to be learning a lot about our history, which is uh, fascinating. You know, uh, uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of uh, uh, the legacies uh, that we got from the Arabs, from the Jews. We're going to be visiting synagogues, mosques, um, uh, of course, churches as well. Um, as I mentioned, you know, Spain has a very important heritage with uh, with the Arabs, yeah, and the Jews as well. You have to think that the Sephardic Jews. Uh, this is the home for the Sephardic Jews. Uh, Jews uh, here in, in Spain. Um, and it's a country full of traditions and, 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 and festivals as well that if, depending on the time of the year that you come, you might be uh, finding uh, along the way. Uh, we're also very welcoming here in Spain, so it's a very nice uh, uh, way to come here because uh, you will feel uh, like at home. Yeah? We're very, very friendly here. So it's also very nice if you travel by yourself. So it's, uh, it's perfect. Then um, the tour starts in, uh, in Madrid. <clears throat> and uh, in Madrid, uh, if you like art, this is uh, the perfect uh, place because uh, in Madrid, you will be visiting the Prado Museum with, uh, with an expert guide. Uh, you also have many other museums, but the Prado is the biggest highlight regarding art in, in, in Madrid, besides being the capital of Spain and, and a fantastic uh, city. Um, when, when you're in Madrid as well, uh, there is a, one of the excursions that you can do actually, uh, which is one of my favorites, is uh, visiting Toledo. You know, Toledo used to be the old capital of, uh, of Spain uh, until the 16th century. And uh, it's the best example of these three cultures I was telling you about, the Jews, the Arabs, and the Christians living together. Um, and now it's a world heritage uh, city, um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful place. So um, it's a question you shouldn't miss when you, when you are in, in Madrid. Then, from, uh, from Madrid, uh, we moved down south to um, Andalusia and we stopped in Cordoba. We actually take the fast train, you know, the bullet train, which is uh, one of the best uh, bullet train uh, networks in the, in the world, the one we have in Spain. 
And uh, in Cordoba, we visit uh, the magnificent uh, mosque, you know, which is uh, one of the most important uh, monuments uh, regarding the, the Arabs uh, here in Spain. So uh, after there, we go to Sevilla. And in the way to Sevilla, we stop in, uh, in a place to learn about the making of olive oil. Uh, you have to think that Spain is the biggest producer of olive oil in the world, yeah? So you will learn all about that. Then we get to Sevilla. Sevilla, what can I tell you about it? It's uh, one of the most beautiful cities, not only in Spain, I think in the whole world, you know? Besides, it's a romantic place. Think about all the operas that have been inspired, all the artists that have inspired uh, uh, about Sevilla. You know, think about Carmen, the weddings of Figaro, uh, you name it, you know, there's a lot of things. And of course, we visit the main highlights in there, the Plaza de España. There you can see me with some friends um, that we became actually very good friends uh, in the end of the trip in the Plaza de España. Um, also, you have the chance to see a real flamenco show in Sevilla, which is very nice. Uh, we will also visit the cathedral, which is where Columbus is buried. Um, and Sevilla is a, it's a really special, really special place. And there is a lot of things to do as well in your free time. Um, from there, we move uh, from Sevilla, we move to Costa del Sol. Um, and in the way, we stop in beautiful Ronda. Ronda, for me, is one of those hidden gems in Spain. And um, one of my favorite places in the world, to be honest with you, it's so beautiful. I mean, the, the village is absolutely astonishing, but the, they have some of the most breathtaking uh, views that you can see in the whole country. And it's also the home of the oldest bull ring in the country. You know, the, the actual bullfighting started in Ronda. Yeah? So it's, uh, it's where the, the, the bullfighting started. So that's enough reason to go there and see this old uh, bull ring as well. So from Ronda, we go to Costa del Sol. Uh, Costa del Sol is, uh, is on the Mediterranean side, on the southeast. It's all the coast from Malaga to Marbella. It's full of one, one place after the other along the coast. Um, beautiful beaches um, where could you can relax and enjoy. And it's a really, really nice place. Bernardo, after the group <clears throat> arrive in Costa del Sol, they have the option to have a free, free, uh, free day exploring Costa del Sol, <clears throat> or they can take an excursion and visit Gibraltar. Can you walk our audience through that experience? Yes, of course. Yes, as you can say, you can, they can just stay uh, enjoying the Costa del Sol, or we can actually go to Gibraltar, which I highly recommend because uh, it's interesting for many reasons. The first reason is because you visit a country within a country, you know, uh, Gibraltar still belongs to the UK. And it's also, uh, you know, historical reasons is also is very interesting, but we go and visit the Rock of Gibraltar, which is very famous. We visit the, the with the, some local guides in Gibraltar, we visit the main highlights of uh, of the island, of course, we don't miss the monkeys. You know, people are really are, are already always like uh, to to see them, um, and it's a very very pleasant day. It's a full day excursion. We leave very early in the morning, and then we have lunch in the in Gibraltar, and after lunch we go back to the Costa del Sol. It's a very nice trip. Wonderful. Yeah. So uh, after the Costa del Sol, we head up to we start going up north but still in the south part of spain and we go to granada <clears throat> again granada it's um you know granada was the last uh, arab kingdom we had in spain until 1492 um, when isabel uh, of castilla conquered it and uh, and then is when Sp spain started to be created but uh, in granada what we see the most uh, beautiful uh, building is the alhambra you know which is one of the wonders really of the world it's, uh, it's a beautiful place that you will be able to visit see this is where the the, the arab kings used to live and you visit everything inside, the winter palaces, the summer palaces, and it's just uh, an amazing place to visit. Yeah? Um, and then from uh, Granada, we, um, we move to start going up again. We drive up to Valencia in the north, we start going northeast. And Valencia is my hometown, yeah? so um, I always love uh, visiting there because I, I know it very well and I feel obviously at home. But um, Valencia, it's famous mainly, uh, of course, it's the land of oranges, you know, Valencia oranges, and it's also the land for the, the home for the paella, you know, uh, uh, the, pa the paella was actually created, originated in, in Valencia. So the best thing you can do in Valencia besides visiting the beautiful city is to... Um, to eat a paella 
And actually, you can also have the option not only to eat it, but also to learn how to cook it. Yeah? And then from there, from Valencia, we moved to Barcelona, which is a fantastic city. It's the end of the tour. Uh, and there, you're gonna, if you love architecture, you're going to be able to enjoy the, um, the beautiful architecture from Gaudí in there. Actually, the picture you're showing right now, uh, the one behind it, this is a, it's a festival in Valencia. It's called Las Fallas. It's in March. Uh, we celebrate St. Joseph. And it's a huge festival. We make these monuments of uh, papier mache and we burn them on the night of the 19th of March, St. Joseph. And you have like seven or 800 monuments all over the city. And that night, the whole city is on fire. And uh, it's a beautiful, and that's a traditional dress for the Valencian women on those days. So sorry, and then I was telling you about Barcelona. When we get to Barcelona, of course, uh, we visit um, the Gaudí's uh, work, especially the Sagrada Familia. But then you also have the chance to visit some of the, the other works that Gaudí has, the Park Well, and the, one of the apartments in La Pedrera, in the House of La Pedrera. And then Barcelona is just, it's on the seaside and it's an amazing city to, to visit. Bernardo, speaking of Barcelona, we have a pre-submitted question from the audience, and that is, yes. do you know <clears throat> when the Sagrada Familia will be completed? Yes, it's supposed to be. They have a deadline, which is in, the, in 2026, which is to commemorate the, the 100th anniversary of the death of uh, Gaudí. He died in that year. Uh, he was run over by a tram, and in 2026, they wanted to be finished. And it seems that it's going to happen so far, but we'll have to see. Hmm. Thank you. We have another question, actually. Our audience yes. wants to know how we get from Costa del Sol to Gibraltar. Is it by boat, by plane? How do by we bus. It? By bus. By bus. Yeah, we drive. Yeah, we drive to, to Gibraltar. Yeah. It's driving. It depends where you stay in Costa del Sol, you take longer than that, but I mean, you drive, normally driving. All right. Thank you, Bernardo. I Thank cannot you. wait until we're able to travel again because eating a paella in Valencia is yes. now my Spain travel wish list. <laughs> yes. Now, for those of you who are familiar with our tours, you know we have multi-country tours that touch different parts of Europe. And today we want to spotlight a very special one from France to Spain to Portugal, spirituality comes at the forefront on this memorable journey. We have the wonderful Leonor who is going to take us through this unique itinerary. Leonor? Uh, thank you, Claudia. Yes, um, you see, I'm very glad to explain this tour because I find it very special. It's not only a tour, it's, a, it's an experience and a spiritual experience. We walk on and we follow the path of uh, the search of centuries of people for hope, for salvation, and for inner peace. So um, what is fantastic about this tour is that uh, we follow in Spain, we do the main part in Spain, and we follow the way of St. James. We start a little bit in France, and we finish a little bit in Portugal, but most of it is the way of St. James. And I would like to uh, tell you that the way of St. James is more than just a pilgrim walk. It's a way of life. Uh, it's based on, on the nine, it's 11th century old, and on the 900s, there was a, a reign of stars, and they went in Galicia, and they went there to see what was happening, and they discovered the remains of the Apostle St. James, and that's what the, the pilgrim uh, walk is. We go to see the tomb of the uh, Apostle St. James. So, we start the tour in Toulouse. Toulouse is in France, and Toulouse is really a lovely uh, town. As you can see in the pictures, it's pink. It's a pink town because the stone uh, is, uh, it produces this color. And so at sunset, it has this rosé glow. It's really, really beautiful. And it's where you have the tomb of Thomas of Aquinas. From Toulouse, we move on. We go to Lourdes. It's a short drive. And Lourdes, also in France, is where we learn about the beautiful story of the apparitions of Virgin Mary to uh, Bernadette to Viru. And we see the people pilgriming there looking for healing as well. And from Lourdes, we cross the border with Spain and we go to Spain, we cross the Pyrenees and drive down to Zaragoza. 
Zaragoza, here you have the beautiful shrine of uh, the Virgin of the Pillar. And it's a magnificent city and monument. And um, it's the first city that got converted to Christianity in Spain. It was a Roman city. And that's why the, the, we have the, uh, the shrine of the Virgin Mary there. Then from Zaragoza, we continue on to Burgos. And uh, as you can tell, this tour is very different from Leonardo's because this tour is mostly uh, the north half of Spain, where we see the influence of Christianity and the resistance towards the Muslim invasion. So what you will see is, for instance, Burgos it was the capital of the Kingdom of Castilla in this reconquest of Spain. You will see magnificent, magnificent architecture. You will also have the opportunity to try the lovely roasted lamb, so feed your soul and also your, your body. And also in Burgos, we have a magnificent arche archaeological museum of prehistory. It's the museum of uh, uh, evolution. Uh, but the most in interesting thing about the stop in Burgos is that we do our first walk of the way of St. James. Uh, in this walk, we start in a tiny little town that's as ancient as the, as the walk itself. And we will see how the it affected the, the way of St. James, affected the life of my country for all these centuries. Ancient little hotels, ancient little inns or restaurants that are, some of them were founded along these centuries, you see. And here you have an entrance to Burgos of the way of St. James. Uh, from Burgos, we go to Leon, another capital of the Reconquest that's also located on the way of St. James. Um, the, the, Leon, I really recommend the cathedral because it has the biggest amount of stained glass windows that you can find in the cathedral. It's almost light. It's like floating. And then we continue uh, doing the way of St. James. Um, we have another opportunity just, arriving, just before arriving to Santiago to do another part of the pilgrimage that's very moving because we run into other pilgrims that are already walking the way. And it's a completely different landscape. Uh, and we arrived to the first, the last spot where we can see St. James from the distance and people fall on their knees. And with our local guide, we visit Santiago the next day. Um, we also have the opportunity to have a magnificent dinner in, in Santiago where we can try seafood or local specialties. That's Artua cheese, my favorite, and I cannot have cheese. And, and, and uh, then from there, we, we have the opportunity to go to uh, Finisterre, where the pilgrims would throw away their, their outfits for pilgriming. They destroy them and are rebo reborn, so to speak. And um, then we continue on. Uh, here we have yes, some photographs of my group that we have this, uh, this joy in our faces because we arrived to Santiago and we also see the pilgrims arriving to the square of El Obradoiro falling on their knees and, and weeping out of the emotion after 600 of a kilometers walking nonstop. Um, it's about one month and a half if you do it walking, you see. So when we see that, it's really, really impressive. At the end of the... Yes. Leonardo, we have a quick question from the audience. They want to know how much walking is involved. Um, for the two excursions, it's about one hour and a half, depending how we're doing, depending on the weather. Uh, we can make it a little longer if we want, but not more than two hours for sure. So after the sightseeing of Santiago, we uh, have the opportunity to go into the Obradoiro, wonderful cathedral, and attend the Pilgrim's Mass, which is the final of our pilgrimage to Santiago. Right. Leonor, once we're in Santiago de Compostela, you bring the group to experience a very ancient and popular ceremony inside the cathedral. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Of course, I love it. It's the Botafumeiro. You see the Botafumeiro is that huge um, incense burner that uh, is a tradition ca that comes from the Middle Ages. And they would put, they would the incense burner all over the population coming into because in the Middle Ages, the people didn't shower, didn't uh, have any opportunity to change their clothes. 
So it, it was a way to purify their souls and also the atmosphere. Remember, it's times of, of plagues as well, nothing to do with the present. So, but it's really, really, really beautiful and very moving. We see all these ancients that connects also with the, the three kings that went to be to see Jesus when he was born and they offered him incense. So that's the meaning of it. Then from, uh, and from Santiago, we continue down south to Portugal. Portugal is another country, very beautiful country. I'm not going to go in depth into it because uh, we're talking about Spain today, but we finish in Fatima the tour, and let's take the extension. And Fatima is very, very relevant because, uh, you know, um, they say that the Virgin of Fatima, Our Lady of Fatima, the uh, apparition of the lady there, protected John Paul II, the Pope, uh, and saved her his life in the attack that he suffered in the 80s. Thank you. Thank you, Leonor. That was wonderful. This tour is great for those who want to follow in the footsteps of medieval pilgrims through France, Spain, and Portugal, and return home with an enriched sense of spirituality. From savoring San Sebastian's world-famous fair to taking in the culture of Barcelona and Madrid, this tour is sure to delight foodies and wine enthusiasts alike. Pass. Would you do the honors of taking us through this delicious food and wine tour? Of course, it would be my pleasure. I think this is a very interesting tour because um, it's a mixture of culture and gastronomy, which is another kind of culture. Uh, normally on tours, we visit monuments and museums, but on this one, we do that. But also we do other things such as visiting uh, food markets, cooking class. We have a wine tasting um, and we learn how we make uh, uh, ham, for example, or olive oil, or sherry wine. So um, it's a good tour also because it's a combination of visiting main cities with small places, which is something that doesn't happen on other tours. And also, if you've never been to Spain, it's a good tour because you will be visiting the main highlights of the country, like Barcelona, San Sebastian, Bilbao, Madrid and Sevilla. And uh, it's a way to discover north to south uh, we start in Barcelona, we go north past country and south and down to Sevilla. So you can see the difference in the landscape, the difference on traditions and also on food. And as it is a food and wine tour, there's a lot of wine, a lot of food. And um, in this tour, we make sure that in each place we visit, you have the original food for the place. So you'll be trying different things such as uh, baby lamb or a suckling pig, chocolate con churros, tapas, and obviously paella. So the tour starts in Barcelona and uh, after visiting Sagrada Familia, which is the highlight of the city, obviously, the next day we start a day visiting a food market, St. Catherine's Market, where we walk there with um, a chef because after that we'll go to a cooking class. So we go through the market with the chef and he will be, you know, talking to you and telling you how to buy things, how to buy the fruit, uh, when to buy fish or what day not to buy it or how to choose the fresh fish. And after we do all the shopping, we will walk to the school and have a cooking class where you will learn how to make paella. Paella and tortilla and sangria and many other things. Paz, speaking yes. of Spanish dishes, we have a pre-submitted question from the audience and they want to know how is dinner different in Spain than it is in the US? Well, I think the main difference is the timing. You know, in Spain, we eat late. Um, so for us, lunchtime will be any time between two and four, and dinner time will be any time between 8.30, 10.30, 11. Uh, so that's always something that shocks people. Second difference is um, that when we sit for lunch, the lunch or the dinner, it always takes at least a couple of hours. And also that we share, we normally, you know, all the different dishes when we go to a restaurant with friends or family, but we share everything. We put the food in the middle of the table and we share everything that we eat. I think that would be the, the main differences. That is right um, up my alley, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So let me continue. From Barcelona, we, we head towards the Basque country. Oh, sorry, I forgot, yeah, uh, after the paella, we go to the Cava region where we, we have a Cava tasting. Cava is the, the like the champagne, the Spanish champagne. It's done with the same methods as in champagne, but we cannot use that name. So we go to the Cava region and obviously we have a Cava tasting. 
And then we leave Barcelona and we head towards the Basque country and we stop in Pamplona. You know, Pamplona is famous for the running of the bulls. So we go there by train. Uh, it, when we arrive there, it's lunchtime. And the first thing we do is having some pinchos. I will explain what pinchos are a bit later. And um, uh, we do the walking of the running of the bulls. I don't make the group run the running of the bulls, but we walk doing the running of the bulls so people get to see where exactly the running of the bulls happened in the month of July. And I also take the groups to the oldest cafe in Pamplona where Hemingway used to sit and write. And then from Pamplona, we continue towards the Basque country where we spent a few days stopping in San Sebastian, beautiful San Sebastian. Uh, we visit fish markets because we visit as many markets as we can on this tour. And then we head to Bilbao, where we obviously go and visit the Kugenheim Museum, a masterpiece by Frank Gehry. And we visit the collection, but we also have to meet the best meal of the whole tour inside the museum. So it's, for me, it's one of the favorite days of the tour. And uh, a lot of people know about the Guggenheim Museum, but they don't know there is another Frank Gehry building, which is the one that you're watching right now, this is a hotel that we visit the next day. It belongs to the winery Marques de Riscal in Rioja region. So um, we go there the next day. So you get to see both buildings by Frank Gehry. And we visit the winery. And obviously, we have a wine tasting. We visit all the places in Rioja before we start heading towards uh, south, towards Madrid. And we go to Ribera del Duero, to Aranda del Duero, where we have the wine Ribera del Duero. And uh, in Aranda, uh, we spend one night sleeping in the countryside in a hotel that belongs to a family that owns uh, a vineyard. So we are in the countryside surrounded by vines where you can go for a walk. And in the evening before dinner, one of the members of the family always walks with us through the property and also in the, in the winery, in the cellars, and they explain about their wines. And then we have dinner there with the family. Um, we have baby lamb, which is also the speciality uh, for the region. Uh, so we spend a day in the countryside or an afternoon, an evening in the countryside before we head to Madrid, to the big city. Once we get to Madrid, obviously we're going to visit the main highlights of the city, including the Prada Museum. We also go to St. Michael's Market. And the last day we have farewell dinner at Casa Botin. What's Casa Botin is the oldest restaurant in the world because it was opened in 1725 and it has never been closed. And there we have the speciality, which is suckling pig, is the photo that you have on the top right. And uh, this would be the end of the tour, but I really, really recommend you, if you ever do this tour, to take the extension, to go on the extension into Sevilla, because not only Sevilla is absolutely amazing city and beautiful, but because when you go south to the extension is when you're going to see, as is this a food and wine tour, a specific products from the country, such as olive oil. So we'll see how the olive oil is made, sherry wine, and also uh, the ham, jamón, you know, that comes from that, uh, the black pigs that are original for, for here, for the peninsula, like that little, you know, black pig that is looking at you right now. So this would be the tour, and I hope you, you will enjoy it soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paz. To all the foodies and wine enthusiasts out there, if you are thinking of joining us on a food and wine tour, this one is sure to leave your heart as well as your belly very content. Now, some of you may already know what tapas and the tapas culture is like in Spain. But for those of you who do not, our very own Paz is going to tell us a little bit more about what these small Spanish savory dishes are. Now, tapas will not only be enjoyed on our food and wine tour, but also on all of our other Spain tours. Paz? Yes. So tapas, um, the, the, the word tapas comes from the verb in Spanish, tapar, which means to cover. And it comes because um, the origin is that uh, in the past, whenever there was a glass of wine or a jar of wine on the table, it had to be covered with something to eat. That's why we call it tapa, tapa, tapas or tapar. That's the cover, the cover of the, that was the food covering the wine. So this is the origin of the name. 
And uh, tapas is anything to it. It can be absolutely anything. It's not such a thing as one thing is a tapa. Anything on a small portion is a tapa. So you have some examples such as olives or uh, cheese or ham or tortilla or croquettes or octopus. Anything on a small portion is a tapa. So the tradition in Spain is to go to a bar and when you ask for a drink, they all normally give you something for free. They put it on the counter for you to eat with it. It's always for free, and this is what we call a tapa, okay? And then we have a pincho. Pincho is a bit different because it's only, um, we only have pinchos in the Basque country. So Bilbao, San Sebastian, Pamplona. And the pincho, pincho means toothpick. You can see the picture on the top left. And a pincho is um, bread with uh, some food uh, in, in steps, one over the other, like little floors, like building a building all connected with a toothpick. So when you go in the Basque country into a bar, uh, you ask for a drink, a wine, a cider, whatever, they give you an empty plate and the food is displayed on the counter. So you can see all the different pinches and then you choose the pinches that you want to eat and then you will pay the number of pinches, the number of toothpicks that you leave on the plate. So that's the main difference between the two of them. Super interesting, Paz. Thank you so very much. Next, Thanks, we have Bernardo, who is going to demonstrate how to make an authentic cocktail from his hometown, oh. Valencia. Bernardo, can you tell us a little bit more about this drink? Yes, of course. This is, uh, you know, when people come to Spain, they always think about sangria, which is, of course, uh, is, uh, is the most well known. But there is also a cocktail that comes from Valencia, where I come, where, where I am from, and it's called Agua de Valencia. Uh, it's not something you would use really as to eat. It's more like a cocktail thing, and it's uh, basically uh, you need uh, oranges, uh, freshly squeezed orange juice. Uh, champagne um, and then a little bit of uh, vodka and a little bit of uh, gin just a little bit yeah and some ice so uh, basically what you do is uh, i wash my hands already uh, you put the uh, ice in the in the jar then you put some some of the this uh, orange juice i actually squeeze it myself from oranges in the supermarket here you can do that they have a machine and you can squeeze it so you put some um, some orange juice in there yeah i'm gonna put a little bit more i'll give you the recipe later and then you open the uh, the champagne this is cava actually it's not champagne it's the it's the spanish uh, champagne we call it cava and you pour the uh, the jar with the cava and uh, put uh, <laughs> just a little bit of vodka <laughs> <laughs> and a little bit of gin. Just a little bit, yeah. Well, that you make it and then you decide. And you also here, we like to put a little bit of uh, sugar. I'm going to put like uh, two spoons like this. Yeah, some people they like it really, really sweet, and then you mix everything. <clears throat> and uh, normally, the best is to, it would be to leave this in the refrigerator for a little bit, but um, you just uh, mix everything well, and then you serve it. And uh, cheers. oh, it's very nice. And uh, you have to be very careful because actually. If, if you do it right, all you taste is orange juice and it goes up to your head very quickly, but it's fantastic. Agua de Valencia. I love that, Bernardo. Now all you have to do is pack it up and send it to Boston <laughs> so I can try it. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> um, well, now I know the drink that I'm going to be ordering when I yeah. order my paella in Valencia. Um, but what is a paella and a refreshing cocktail without some dessert? Leonor, I know you have a delicious plate ready for us. What is mm -hmm. it? Yes. Uh, so what I'm having, uh, I have a tooth, tooth. What do you say? A sweet tooth. So what I'm having is the famous chocolate, uh, Spanish chocolate that most of the times you have heard with churros. But I'm having it instead of with churros, which is a fried dough, with pica tostes, which is 
you see here, you have the chocolate. Because this is the way, uh, a way to prepare, I'll show you. I did them myself this morning. Uh, there you, well, it, looks, it's, it looks nicer than, there it is. And <laughs> bread, um, bread fried in olive oil. And then there are two options. You can prepare them with sugar and cinnamon. Cinnamon low lowers the sugar level in your blood, so it's very healthy. Or with salt. Of course, I'm having them with a little bit of salt because my chocolate is already very sweet. But this chocolate is not just chocolate with milk. Uh, it's a it's a very very thick chocolate. It's creamy. Let's see if I, if it comes in the right place. You see. And we usually have it. Can you see? There it is. We usually have it in very cold days. It's typical when we go uh, buying our presents for Christmas. Uh, at the end of a very cold shopping day, we go and have a chocolate with our families or whenever it's cold. These days I'm eating a lot of chocolate with pica toste. So uh, on our tours, I, I usually take my groups to San Ginés which is the most ancient chocolate place in Spain. Um, and it's really, really famous and very, very good, but I prefer mine. Cheers. <laughs> Salud. That looks really good. So what Bernardo did is called Agua, like water, de Valencia. And this is pica tostes with hot drinking chocolate. Thank you. Thank you both for that wonderful demonstration. We will now go into our Q&A session. So feel free to use the Q&A box to ask our tour director some questions. It can be anything from where can I get the best churros in Madrid to what is the best time to visit Spain to avoid crowds. Any question is valid, so please ask away. In the meantime, while we get some of those questions rolling in, I have a question for all the tour directors, but I will start with you, Bernardo. Yes. What is one thing that you absolutely cannot miss when traveling to Spain? Oof, uh, there are many, but I think uh, one of the, the best things is uh, uh, trying to find out whatever festival, local festival you have around and go and join it because uh, we are great uh, for festivals here and but like i mean i was saying like if you if you are in martin in valencia try not to miss las fallas uh, or when you come to spain in easter time you know especially if you go to sevilla or the south of spain and you see all these fantastic and and just amazing um, uh, parades and processions you know in the, in the easter time um, try always to, to find out about that because we are really, really good for, for uh, these type of things, but you have many of them. Yeah, but that's one of my best things. I like that. I like that. Wonderful. And Paz? Well, I think if you come to Spain, what you have to do is uh, being outside and walking in the streets as much as you can, because that's what we do. We live outside. So um, sometimes there's so many people in the streets that people on tour, they ask me, where is these people going? And I would say nowhere. They're just out because, you know, that's how we live. We live outside. So I would say that, you know, when you're a teenager and you're in your room doing your things and you don't go out, your mother worries. You think that you're ill because <laughs> they want you to go out. So I would say <laughs> going around and, uh, you know, see the way we live. Love that. And Leonor, what do you think? Oh, you're on mute, Leonor. Not sure, yeah. <laughs> Of course. Yes. So uh, for me, it's tapas hopping. I think you cannot miss tapas hopping. That's something very Spanish and it's lots of fun. You go to little bars, have a few little uh, doses, these tapas, a, a small portion with your friends. There are people having the same sort of tapas and around and you talk with everyone and then you go to another bar next door and try different ones. And you can even try the same dish in different ways, cooked and it's so much fun. And of course you are drinking while eating. So it's very cheerful. Well, that sounds like the perfect plan to me. You walk a lot like pass or with pass and then you go tapas hopping with Leonor and then you'll be <laughs> fit the rest of the trip. And enjoy yes. <laughs> and All right. The water. <laughs> we have a question from the audience. Uh, Rihanna wants to know if we observe siesta 
on the tours because she loves her naps. I can, uh, I can try to answer that. Go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. So um, you see, in my point of view, um, we are the afternoons are usually a little slower. We have a, a little bit <clears> of freedom <throat> after the side things in the morning, or we are on the bus. When we are traveling by bus, uh, the bus is also a great opportunity for, for having siesta. We respect your little break. So I think you do it. We have that. Yeah. I normally uh, allow people to have the siesta, especially when you're traveling and you go from one city to another after lunch. Um, you know, I, I go to the bus and I always say, okay, I'm going to let you now practice our national sport. And people, some people say, oh, football? And say, no, siesta. <laughs> <laughs> so I will not disturb you. And then people enjoy that little siesta very much. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very nice, especially in the summer and especially after lunch. It's a must, you have to do it. Great. Okay, I wanted to ask that uh, some people think that <clears throat> we close things for siesta. It's not like that. I mean, um, in, in big cities, nothing closes, you know, at lunchtime in small places it could be, but souvenir shops and the areas where we normally, everything is open in case someone is wondering. Thank you, Paz. I'm going to read out some of the questions that we are getting in our Q&A box. So we have, this one is for Leonor. Does the way of St. James trip count to get the passport stamped to the state we completed the pilgrimage? Um, we can get the, the passport and we can get it stamped in, in some places, but we actually are not doing the, the way of St. James in the way that it's officially required. Uh, nevertheless, we uh, can also get the passport stamped at the end and get a certificate of having done, there are two kinds of certificates, a certificate of having it done properly and another one that is like, you've done some sort of the way of St. James. So you can get that one as well. Perfect, thank you. We have another question. And this one is for each of you actually. So we'll start with Paz. But someone from the audience wants to know what is your favorite time to be in Spain as a tour director or as a Spaniard? <laughs> well, I think um, because of the weather that we have, not, not this weekend because it's been snowing, I don't know if you know, <laughs> but normally in Spain we have good weather, even if it's winter, it's very mild winter, so mm -hmm. any time of the year is a good time to come because we have very, very mild winter, so you can do everything you do in the summer, you can do it during the winter, as I said, except for this week, there is snow everywhere, but um, the summer, July, August is quite hot, especially if you go to the south, but uh, the rest of the year, you know, anytime between, I would say, March until half July and then September to December, perfect. Hmm. I would say, I don't know what my colleagues want to say. I know, no, I, I agree with that, but I mean, I think also depends on which tour or, or which area of Spain you're planning to go. I mean, that's it also makes a difference. Um, and uh, let's say if you don't like places too crowded, uh, maybe the beginning of the year would be it's, it's, a, it's a time of the year especially I mean now as Pat was saying that we have a lot of snow but the beginning of the year is also a nice time to go to places where the places are not so crowded yeah um, so it's, it's also nice but I think uh, Spain is an easy country as in weather and everything and in general the whole year around is, is nice summer is very hot in some places so that would be a nice place nice time to go to the north for instance but uh, I don't know. I, I like uh, I like the beginning of the year, uh, actually, to, to travel. I like it. Uh, for me, it's April. I like April because uh, uh, it's not so crowded yet, but we have the flower is blossoming uh, late April, uh, mid-May. That's uh, the, my favorite season. It's really beautiful. Of course, Spain is beautiful all year round because, yeah, like Paz just said, we have 360 days of sun normally even when it snows there's sun but um april for me is my my month wonderful uh well we have a question here for bernardo and okay. someone wants to know does brexit affect the side trip to gibraltar <laughs> no actually because uh well 
until uh, very short ago, uh, we were like, Ooh. and even the people in Gibraltar, but actually they have come to a very nice agreement. And Gibraltar has become part of the Schengen agreement area. So now you just whoop, drive in and drive out. There is no no problems. You don't have to show your passport anymore. So it's going to be very, very easy, much easier than before to go in actually. So it's, right. it's very good. That's great. Thank you. And another question one for you. <clears throat> Um, our audience wants to know if, when we go to Valencia, can we visit where ja the Jadro is made or Jadro is made? Is this for me? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes, you can do it. I mean, um, Jadro is in Valencia. The factory is in Valencia. It doesn't belong to the owners anymore, I have to say. Um, but um, it, it is there, yes. Uh, uh, so uh, you can visit the factory. Uh, it's just not too far. Uh, that you can do that on your free time. I mean, it's not part of the of the visits of the tour, but it, you can do that on your on your on your free time. Yes, you could do it. However, they have a beautiful shop in the city. You know, like the flagship store in the city is is just amazing. Hmm. Great. Um, <clears throat> this one is for Paz. What are some of your favorite things to do and see in Barcelona? Um, well, you know, everyone knows about Gaudí and Sagrada Familia, but Barcelona is much more than that. So there are many other buildings that belong to the same period, modernist. So I would always recommend to see, for example, the Hospital of San Pau um, uh, or, the, or the Music Palace that were done by another architect, Domenica Montaner, that are absolutely stunning. So that is not only about Gaudi, but many other things. And then there's a beautiful neighborhood called uh, El Born, which is, if you know Barcelona, around the area of Picasso Museum and the Church of Santa Maria del Mar, that is very trendy at the moment. It's mostly pedestrian and it's full of uh, restaurants and boutiques and shops. And uh, I would say this is um, where I would recommend to go out of the touristic areas, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. We have another question here. Um, here we go. Where can I find, and this could be for any of you, maybe Leonor, you know, since you, you did a demonstration, but Helga wants to know, where can I find the best churros and hot chocolate in Madrid Centro? <laughs> um. If you see, the best and most famous and classical place is San Ginés. The, the chocolate place is about um, 100 years old by now, maybe 110. It's very, very famous. Now, um, that's the official version. If you ask me personally, my opinion, I prefer Valor. Valor is a chocolate place that is also very close to there, but Valor is the Spanish brand of chocolate. It's Valencian, as Bernardo is smiling. Uh, it's from Valencia, and we can have excellent churros and chocolate, and the quality is the best. And you can not only have it in Madrid, that they have a beautiful mm. uh, chocolate place, but also in Valencia. Right, Bernardo? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Well, to be honest, uh, Leonor was saying, I mean, the most popular place is San Ginés in Madrid, and it's you know, go there is like the atmosphere and, you know, the place is the oldest place. It's open 24 hours. So anytime during the day, you can go there. So there is not, uh, they, they are never closed. Uh, but again, I, I live not too far from there. And just around the corner, not even Valor, but just around the corner is a small little cafeteria where you can have, uh, they make great churros, really mm -hmm. the best uh, for me. But it depends. But in Valencia also, in, in Santa Catalina, yeah, that's true. They have very nice. No. They are in my town, but that's too far mm. away. Mm. Too Wonderful. Well, we have one question that is very relevant to what's happening right now. Um, Karen wants to know, how did the people of Spain handle the recent blizzard besides sledding, building snowmen, and having fun? How did it affect travel? <laughs> Well, I can tell you, I, w I was supposed to be in Madrid because I, as I said, I, I live there, but I am in Valencia right now. I mean, I have been postponing my trip to go to Madrid three times already uh, because of the snow, I cannot go and I'm stuck here. I mean, I'm with my family, but still, I should be in Madrid by now. And I, I don't think I'm going to be able to go until next week, at least. <laughs> no. 
Well, I can tell you I haven't been out since Saturday because it's impossible to walk in the streets. And uh, there, there were no buses and people is walking in the streets of Madrid dressed with like, it was a ski resort, dressed with the ski in clothes and uh, with their skis in their hands and there's no boarding down the streets. So that's what it looks like right now. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you all for answering my questions. Um, we do have a few more, but in the interest of saving time, for those of you who didn't get their questions answered, you can call us or we can reach out to you and answer your questions directly. All right, for those of you who might not be familiar with our Spain itineraries with EF Go Ahead tours, there are many ways you can travel. We have our classic tours like the Barcelona, Madrid and Sevilla tour or its longer sister tour, the Grand Tour of Spain. There's of course our faith-based tour, Marian Shrines and the Way of St. James. If you're interested in visiting Spain during their festive season, I recommend a special event tour like our New Year's Eve in Madrid with Barcelona and Sevilla tour. If you're interested in food and wine, of course, our food and wine tour of Spain will be perfect for you, even if it's your first time visiting Spain like past mentioned. Lastly, if you have a group of people who would like to join you, you can also customize your own trip and make it your own. Finally, if you enjoyed yourself today like I did, please mark your calendars for our next Travel Talk webinars. We have solo tours coming up on January 28th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with special guest Jessica, who is one of our ambassadors. Then we have a small group tours on February 11th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard. And finally, we have another destination spotlight for those of you who are interested or want to learn more about Australia and New Zealand on February 16th. You can sign up to any or all of them on our website by going to goaheadtours.com slash webinars. Right, Leonor Paz and Bernardo, thank you so much for taking this time to share your stories and insights and for answering our questions. On tour, we have the pleasure of your company for days and days, but even in this just short hour, I feel like I was transported to Spain and learned so much. I can't wait to see you in person and share a glass of cava when we're able to, but until then, it was wonderful to escape and dream of travel with you. To everyone who joined us at home, thank you so much for taking the time to be here and for participating. We really hope you enjoyed yourself. Leonor Paz and Bernardo, would you like to say goodbye to our friends watching? Yeah, yes, thank course. you. <clears throat> well, thank you very much, gracias. Uh, hopefully we can meet soon. I mean, let's, uh, let's hope so, yeah? Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Thank you, bye. Thank you, Claudia. Bye -bye. Stay safe. Thank you everybody. very much. Ciao. Ciao. Salud. Salud. <laughs>